Sing praises to God. Sing praises. Sing praises to our King. Sing praises. Psalms 47, 6. Good morning, my brothers and sisters. I'm gone. Glory to God. I thank you, Lord God, for your word this morning. I thank you for my brothers and sisters. I thank you for this time of fellowship. And I just ask, Holy Spirit, that you would bind to us, into our hearts, and pour into us your living word, the word of Jesus, the word that says we are made whole, to, to rise and walk in you. I thank you for that. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning, my brothers and sisters. Hey, I declare over you life, wholeness, health, abundance, prosperity in all areas of your life. Not just in your pocketbook, but emotionally and spiritually. That your growth will be phenomenal coming in the year of 2014. The year of victory, my brothers and sisters. The Lord spoke to me. It's the, word of, the word is, 2014 is a year of victory. Declare that and claim that over yourselves that God is greater than anything we can go through. In Jesus' name, glory. Praise the Lord. That was good. I needed to hear that. Anyhow, uh, I haven't been around for a couple of days. My brother passed away on Monday. And, uh, you know, was it, at first when I heard that he was uh, getting ready to go, it was, it was a real struggle for me. I was jealous, but I was mourning for him. And uh, anyhow, the Lord showed me a picture, and I didn't know he had died at the time. But he showed me a picture of my brother standing before God in his glory. My brother looked healthy. He looked like a young man. There, there, there wasn't any gray areas there. There wasn't any sickness in him. And he was going into the joy of his Lord. And uh, at any rate, my brother had spent many years ill from self-infliction, from believing the lies of the enemy, from others believing the lies of the enemy and pouring on him. But now he's not in pain anymore, and I just rejoice for him. I just rejoice for him. I'm sad that his parting, but I rejoice for him because he's in the arms of God. He's he knows things spiritually that that we, if we lived a thousand lifetimes on earth, would never know. He sees the the face of the Lord unveiled. There's nothing that separates him that separates him from his God. And, I, you know, I just, I want to encourage you that if you have loved ones that are dying or have passed on, if they know Jesus, they're going to a better place. Um, I just believe that, that there's hope there for them. And uh, I just declare that over those grieving right now, a release of that grief, that the enemy would come in and uh, cast a net over you and build a stronghold in that grief. And you would, you would come into agreement with the Word of God that Jesus isn't going to cast anybody out that comes to Him. That He will not re reject anyone that comes from Him. And what I saw on Monday, before I even knew that my brother was dead, I saw him... I saw him in glory. The Lord, Lord was merciful and showed me that picture of my brother. And God was merciful <clears throat> in my brother's death because my brother didn't have to suffer anymore. He was made alive in Christ Jesus because of what Jesus did. And I think, I think a lot of times we... we forget that we fail to acknowledge what Jesus has done in our lives or somebody else's life. But my brother was 49 years old when he died. And he wasn't an old man. And my mother and I, we went and viewed him yesterday. We had to go sign some papers. And when we saw him, he looked young. His face was full. Uh, he just looked good. It, and it really brought closure 
to, to what I was going through, and I believe it brought closure to what my mom was going through. And we, and we can rejoice where he is and not, and not worry. And so when we put our trust in Jesus, we don't have to worry. There's no reason to worry. We can sing praises to our God. And we can sing praises to the King. Every day we walk, we can rejoice in the Lord, no matter what we face. If it's us that faces our own mortality, we have to realize that we are eternal beings in Jesus. That we are eternal in Jesus. We're, we, didn't, we weren't just born to die, we were born to live. We were born to live in Him. But until we do live in Him, we're born to die. <laughs> That's kind of a, uh, let's see, a paradox. I think I could say, you know, it's, it, it's, you know, it's the seed has to be has to die in order to live. We we died with Christ, but we're raised again with Him into His glory. But if we have worries about death, we're not putting our faith and trust in Jesus. When I saw my brother standing before the Father, I saw the glory of God surrounding him. It wasn't, it wasn't something that I was thinking about. It just came to me. The Lord just gave me a vision of that. I didn't hear any words. I didn't hear any music playing. I just saw that picture of my brother and found out about 20 minutes later he passed away. And then seeing seeing him yesterday, the look of peace on his face. And you praise to God for that. Our God is good. And we have to we have to remember that. That no matter where we find ourselves in this life, we have to rely that God is good. We have to trust in that. We have to seek Him for His goodness. We don't remind God that He's good because He knows He's good. We say God is good to remind us because humans have a short memory span. But when we go into glory, we know all things. Nothing's hidden from us. And nothing's hidden from my brother now. And I'm kind of jealous about that. But I rejoice I rejoice in that. And I rejoice in my God. Praise the, Lord. Praise the Lord. Because He calls us to come to Him. He calls you and I to come to Him. To sit on His lap. To lay our heads on His shoulder. To crawl up and, and put ourselves in His bosom. That He might comfort us. When, we, when we're in need of that comforting. I'd like to just burst out in tears of joy right now. So I'm, 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 I'm so joyful and so grateful to my God. I mean, I am just so grateful. I am so grateful because Jesus is faithful to his word. And that just that just stirs stirs me to tears, stirs me to tears, stirs me into tears. And I praise the Lord for that. I am joyful right now. But that might not seem like it, but I am. I, I, I rejoice before the Lord. And I say, Glory to God. Glory to God. All glory and praise to you. And my definition this morning is of come. And, and, and basically what I got from this was, it's not my definition, it's Merriam-Webster's. To enter or assume a condition, position, or relation. God calls you to come to Him. Come to Him. Go to Him. 
You have a relation with him. You are in relation with him. He's your father. You are adopted by him. Glory to God. And uh, when we go to Jesus, he's not going to cast us out. He died for every single sin that we could ever commit. Any kind of guilt trip that we might be on needs to be broken off of us. And now in the name of Jesus, if you're walking in condemnation and guilt, I bind that in Jesus' name and command it to leave you. Receive that in faith. If that's for you, if that's a word for you, receive it in faith. And, and I'm just going to declare right now that these words that are from the Word of God will speak life into you, will speak health into you, will speak boldness into you, courage into you, will, will set you upright. And I believe that through the Spirit. In Jesus' name, glory to God. And in John 6.37 it says, All the Father gives me will come to me. And whoever comes to me, I will never cast out. I might speak a lot about my brother this morning. He lived a pretty hard life. A meth junkie at, at one point in his life. Uh, you know, just really, he was born almost dead. He had, he had a lot of deficits against him. But throughout his life, he attempted, he attempted to come to the Lord. And he'd come to the Lord and the world would catch up with him again. He was, he was pretty weak. And towards the end of his life, the Lord would come to him and say, Trust me. You, we, we had a couple conversations about this. I'd, I'd go over to speak to him and he'd say, I don't, I just don't know, God, how can He forgive me for all the stuff I've done? And I, I'd ask him, I'd say, Gary, is the Lord saying anything to you? And he'd say, yeah, He's telling me to trust Him. But how can He forgive me for everything I've done? And, and, and I, would, I would tell him, I'd say, just give it to Him give it to him. Then we, we, we'd say a prayer and, you know, we'd read the word and then one day he called me up and he says, do you think that he was talking to me and I wasn't really paying attention to him because I was in the middle of doing something and I said, do you, do you think that God would lead me to different parts of, of the Bible? And it caught my attention. I was like, whoa, what's he saying? And I said, say that again? And he told me. And I said, yes. I said, he would. And he got really excited. He says, I have to know more about Jesus. More. More about Jesus. This was about, I don't know, it was probably about six months ago or so. And uh, we never really... My brother and I never really clicked on, on any kind of real level. So, you know, when I came back to the Lord, I lost a lot of anger. And, and, and I, at one point, hated my brother. I, I literally did. And, and it, took an act, it took an act of God for me to release that, to walk in forgiveness towards him. But we never really clicked on a, on a level that we would hang out with each other. I would go visit him from time to time. I would read the Word of God to him. I would pray with him. But we never had a solid personal relationship with each other. And uh, I was going to go to church last, not last Sunday, but the Sunday before last. And my brother, my other brother and I that do have a pretty good relationship were talking. And I said, you know, i kind of like to go see Gary. Yeah, because John called me up and said, hey, Gary's not doing so good. And uh, he's in inten intensive care. Well, actually, I think it was my mom that told me. And so anyway, I talked to my brother John, and I said, oh, maybe. And uh, I was planning on going to church the next day, and I f really felt like the Lord wanted me to go see my brother Gary. So I called up John, and I said, hey, 
you want to go? Because I was supposed to call him early that morning. I hadn't called him. And he said, yeah, let's go. So we went up there, and I was able to see him and uh, give him a hug and just pray over him. And uh, he had a, a breathing tube down his throat, so he couldn't speak. He could write, but he couldn't speak. He was real weak. He hadn't ate for five days at that point. And he looked like death warmed over. And it was kind of hard to see him in that, and looking like that. But I knew he was in good hands because he was in the hospital. And they were getting ready to pull the tube out. And so John and I, we left. We went and did our Christmas day. And we come back and we saw him one more time before we left and drove off. And so I, th I thank God that he sent me there to see him one last time while he was alive. And then yesterday I got to go view him, as I said earlier, at the at the uh, funeral home, and uh, he really looked good. He really looked at peace, and 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 it brought closure to me. The enemy tried to attack me this morning, but you know, no weapon formed against me will prosper. I don't walk in condemnation. Uh, there's nothing I can ever do to change the past. I can just walk forward. Praise the Lord. I don't even have to look to the right or the left. just have to look forward and see Jesus. So if this is speaking to anybody, and I believe it is, I want you to know that when you call on the name of Jesus, He isn't going to cast you out. And the Lord spoke to me this morning about Him. And... Uh, he placed certain attributes in my brother that would rub, rub people the wrong way. But God placed them there. And, and if God places something in you, you you're not going to get rid of it. You might cover it up and hide it, but you're never going to get rid of it. And God loves the things that He places in us. He created us all uniquely individual. There might be people that are similar to us. Our children might be similar to us. But He created us and only us. And there's only one kind. And, and my brother... There was only one kind. And that was my brother Gary. He was one of a kind. And, you know, I believe that he didn't, he didn't have a great life. But my mom says he had a full life. A life we don't understand. And some people would have looked at it and said it was a wasted life. But you're looking at it, when you say that about somebody, you're looking at it through your natural eyes. You're not looking at it. And seeing it through God's eyes. And we need to look at other people and see them through God's eyes. So I just declare that over you right now. I know I'm rambling on this morning, but I really feel it's necessary for some people who might be looking at this. That need to have closure. That need to realize that Jesus is Jesus. Jesus isn't a God that sits on a cloud with a club in his hand and a lightning bolt in the other waiting to strike you down when you make a mistake. Or if you don't feel like you lived your life to its fullest potential. Or if you're not living up to the expectations of somebody else or somebody didn't live up to your expectations. In my life, I had to go through a lot. I had to, I had to be delivered from a lot of anger and hatred. And that included anger and hatred towards my brother, Gary. And, and, as, and as I think about him, I think about he's in, he's in the fortress of our God. He's in, the, he's in the care of the Father's hands. And uh, he's, with the, he's with the Lord. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. In Psalms 46, 7, it says, The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. 
at the end of the day, my brother was protected. And in God's mercy, he took him out of that pain that he lived in so long. He'd taken him out of that shell that he'd suffered in, in a place of shame to a place of glory. Our God is merciful. Our God is greatly to be praised. I love our God. I love Him. Because I know there's none of us that Jesus is going to lose. And I know there's none of us that Jesus will cast out. Or say, you didn't, you didn't, accomplish this you can't come in your life wasn't good enough you weren't sinless enough before before you came to me no he calls us just like we are so he can show his greatness through us. Praise his holy name. Praise his holy name. And then in Matthew eleven twenty eight, Jesus says, Come to me. This is out of the ERB, the easy to read version. Come to me, all of you who are tired and are heavy from the heavy burden that you have been forced to carry. I will give you rest. My brother carried a heavy burden throughout throughout most of his life. And as a consequence, it uh, the consequence of the sin that he carried, and the burden that he carried, turned him into an old man before his time. the mistakes he had made, the addictions that he had, the struggles he went through, both mentally and emotionally and spiritually, at the end of the day, Jesus said, come to me. I will give you rest. And Gary finally trusted in the Lord and went off to to be with him. I just want to say thank you for coming and sitting with me this morning. And uh, I just thank you, Lord, for your word this morning. I thank you for your healing in this. I thank you, Lord God, that we can sing praises to you. Glory to you. That, that the love you have for us, Jesus, transcends anything we could ever know on this on this plane, on this earth. Anything that we can know or believe or hope for. And I just bless your name today and I ask Lord God that you bless my brothers and sisters and that those that needed to hear this would be the ones that need to hear this message this morning. In Jesus' name, Amen. Glory to God. Glory. Praise your
life has been a struggle. If you've been struggling, just give that burden to him. See that he'll take it away from you. He'll remove it from you. And, you be, and trade you for his burden, which is easy. give anything back. Give praises back to the Lord God. Give Him your thanks. Thank you, Lord. Just say, thank you, Lord, for my house. Thank you, Lord God, for this shower. Thank you, Lord God, for this hot meal. Thank you, Lord God, for this cookie. Thank you, Lord God, for sending your Son, Jesus. Glory. about this word this morning and I'm glad I went down this path I thank you Lord for that and we need to step out in faith and begin to worship God because they who worship God must worship Him in spirit and in truth they who worship the Father must worship Him in spirit and in truth they who worship Jesus must worship Him in spirit and in truth and they who walk with the Holy Spirit and worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. Whoever worships God must worship Him in spirit and in Bye.